Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site, BenningAngle.us, a free site. It's Monday, August the 26, 2019. This is a follow-up to the post-fight video I did yesterday on Kovalev versus Yard. Right, I've read the comments. Many of you feel that Yard was too gassed in the eighth round to try to put his foot on the gas and to get the stoppage, right? Get the referee to either pull the plug on the fight or get Buddy McGirt in the corner who recently lost the fighter, right? To throw in the towel. Um, some others of you feel that Anthony Yard went for the KO, right? Did try to step out of the gas, but just wasn't able to convince the referee. Let me just spell out what I think he should have done, right? What I believe a veteran fighter would have done. Understand, he could have been out of gas, right? I'm not even talking about him being completely effective in that eighth round. I'm just talking about a boxing hack here. In other words, a way to look like you're being effective. A way to force the referee to pull the plug. Right? Whether he's effective in hurting Kovalev or not is beside the point to me. Don't get me wrong. During the ending, I would have liked to have had him hit Kovalev in the body with several shots, in part because Kovalev has had problems with body shots in the past. And also, if Kovalev survived, you're better off banking some hard shots to the guy's body and slowing him down than you are trying to headhunt. But the film of the fight is in my favorites folder right now, the highlights that include the eighth round. Let me also say too that the eighth round in its entirety is here on YouTube. The mistake that Anthony Yard makes in that eighth round, just to be clear here, is he badly hurts Kovalev who then starts going backward. Right? Yard makes the mistake of trying to land, in my opinion, a home run punch on Kovalev as Kovalev is backing away. Right? Yard has a problem with the distance. Yard, because he's loading up on shots, right, loses some accuracy and isn't able to land that final shot to drop Kovalev. Right? I believe Kovalev is one punch away from being dropped. What, in my opinion, Yard should have done is as Kovalev moves backwards, Yard should have run in on him. Collapse the pocket first. What's the harm, folks? Kovalev is done. He's too dazed and confused to hurt you. So at this point, you're going for optics. Right? The optics are at least as important as the reality. So think about the end of the second Andre Ward fight. Ward has Kovalev over by the ropes. Right? Kovalev is so smothered that at one point he sits on a rope. Right? Ward is up on him. Now I'll agree. I will agree with those of you who say many of Ward's shot straight low. Look at my post-fight video. I believe I had a link to the end of that fight in the description of, you know, what, what happened. But understand, Ward's the one with the energy. Ward has Kovalev pinned on the ropes. Kovalev, who's dazed and confused, has to deal with an Andre Ward who's close to him. Now, in my opinion, right, Given, in fact, that the fight's in Kovalev's backyard, and sometimes that works against a home fighter. Given the fact that everyone in the arena knew Kovalev was badly hurt. In fact, Kovalev's backing away. You see his head snap, then you see him backing away. 
What Anthony Yard should have done is just run up to him, collapse the pocket, and then start throwing a flurry. In other words, you've all heard of the end of fights where they say, oh, he threw 10 unanswered punches. Right? Shorten the punches. Rather than try for the home run long shot, rather than throw hard shots from distance, right? Trying to hit the guy from distance. Since Kovalev is not able to throw anything back, why not collapse the pocket, use your body? Right? As it is, Anthony Yard gets Kovalev's back up on the ropes. My point is at that stage, whether you're a combination puncher or not, let your hands go. Throw a bunch of punches. Right? You don't have to be 100%. The punches don't have to have that much on them. The point is, the referee is right here convince the ref that there are several unanswered shots. Also, bounce enough to where Kovalev can't clinch you. If Kovalev starts to clinch you, that's when you go to his body, right? He starts to grab you up top, keep a hand free. Look at Andre Ward. It's one of the things Andre Ward did best in his career. Kept a hand free. Carl Frotch, another guy. You're clinching him. He has a hand free. He's hitting you with that hand. The point is to make Kovalev look defenseless. Right? You don't try to knock him out. Rather, you try to throw so many punches that the ref stops the fight whether or not you were able to drop him. Right? So, all I'm saying here is Anthony Yard had this fight right in front of him. He didn't do the moves that, in my opinion, a Gervonta Davis would do. Right? A Ray Leonard would do. In other words, go over there and just let your hands go. Throw a combination. Have the people in the arena who care about their fighter, who know that Dashiev recently lost his life, have the people in the arena know that their guy is hurt, his back is up on the ropes, and the guy in front of them is throwing a flurry. Understand, all Yard needed was for the ref to see enough volume from him to have a reason to stop the fight. Right? All Yard needed was for Buddy McGirt to see his fighter getting riddled with shots. Right? To think to himself, okay, I need to throw in the towel here. Now we know that at the end of the round, Buddy McGirt tells his fighter, you keep getting hit like that. I'm going to stop the fight. Right? Understand. Buddy McGirt was on the verge. Right now, Yard, to me, at that point, I know he's tired, folks. You know he's tired. You know that just by the fact that he doesn't have the experience in the later rounds and he's repeatedly getting hit with Kovalev's jab. Right? The point I'm making is, as Kovalev goes back, to me, an alert veteran fighter would have made sure that the crowd saw his enthusiasm in running over to Kovalev, not in throwing punches at a guy who's moving back and then missing some of the shots, and of course the punches are taking a lot out of Yard because they're heavy shots. Yard's going for the home run. right? Rather than go for the home run, try to hit singles and doubles. That's the point I'm making. Shorten up the swing. Right, run over with Kovalev. Kovalev backs away, you run over. You're like a DB, a defensive back. Run over. So when Kovalev's back hits the wall, you're right here. And rather than thinking, oh, I've got to land that A punch, how about riddling him with B and C shots? 
isn't the point here to show unanswered punches. My point to you too is, who's easier to clinch? The guy who throws a home run shot, and I'm not denying that if Yard had landed a home run shot there, Kovalev wouldn't have been done. I'm not denying that at all. But my point to you is, Yard comes in, he's throwing big shots, Kovalev rolls away. Right? The shots don't land. Wouldn't Yard have been better at that moment coming in and just saying, okay, I'm just going to go like this. I'm just going to throw some punches, bounce side to side. Have this guy physically cornered on the ropes. Then I'm going to let my hands go and have people thinking, wow, this guy is throwing six, seven, eight, nine, ten unanswered punches. Right? Don't you want Kovalev, as he tries to clinch you, to be dealing with shots like that? Now, that's whether or not the shots are the hardest you can throw. I feel that Yard was going for the home run. He wanted to knock Kovalev unconscious. Right? He wanted the end result. He forgot that he's playing to an audience. Right? The audience includes the ref who has the power to stop the fight. And Buddy McGirt, Kovalev's trainer who just lost the fighter in the ring. Right? Had Yard gone over there and just done a flurry, just hit Kovalev with a bunch of shots. Again, they don't have to be A plus shots. You don't even have to be trying to drop the guy. Right? You you just have to try to go over there and convince the judge, excuse me, convince the ref that this guy can't defend himself. You also should be bouncing. Look at how Andre Ward bounces so that it's clear to everyone that you're the more energetic guy, but from a boxing sense, Right? It makes it harder for the dazed and confused fighter to clinch you. As it is, Kovalev's able to clinch Yard. Right? Yard, at that point, is spent, doesn't have the wherewithal to duck his head and start going to Kovalev's body. Kovalev's able to get himself off the ropes. Right? Missed opportunity. Now let's talk about just early comments on Kovalev Canelo. Right? Understand, you're going to have a completely different dynamic here. Right? I can guarantee you that if the fight goes as many rounds as this fight went, Canelo will have landed several more body shots, certainly attempted several more body shots than Anthony Yard. Right? Understand, too, Anthony Yard is getting hit with jabs to the face. The 11th round, that's the punch that ends it. What's noteworthy is that Yard, who's been hit with a bevy of jabs up to that point, is caught so cleanly in the 11th round that he falls straight back. Right? His, his shoulders hit the canvas. In other words, he's caught so completely. This isn't a hit, then the guy loses his balance, and a glove hits the canvas first, and the guy tumbles back. No, this guy literally gets drilled to the point where he just falls straight back. It's as if someone shot him in the forehead. Right? And that's in the 11th round. That also tells you the power of Kovalev's jab I was raised during the Larry Holmes era. You see the jab and you think it's an appetizer. You think, okay, this guy's throwing a jab. This couldn't be one of the most lethal punches in the fight. Right? This is the appetizer in advance of the main course. That's a mistake. Right? I'm just telling you that as hard as Carlos Monzon hit, I'm convinced 
It's that jab that gave him his competitive advantage. I'm just telling you, with Larry Holmes, guys would get bludgeoned with that jab. I mean bludgeoned. Right, Sonny Liston, I know he took out Floyd Patterson early twice. What I want people to do is to revisit, right, revisit those fights, right? Let me just say this. While Liston's a hooker in those fights, Liston's real calling card was that jab. Right, Kovalev, quite frankly, doesn't have to land anything else if he's landing that jab with the regularity that he did in the Anthony Yard fight. Folks, it's by far his most effective punch. He's bludgeoning Anthony Yard with that jab. Right, bludgeoning him. Understand, Kovalev is a right-handed fighter. It's a straight left, they call it on the telecast. That's the jab Kovalev's been throwing from the start of the fight. That jab also opens the door to a very good right hand. Right? But Kovalev doesn't need to throw right hands against Anthony Yard. I thought Yard did well for a fighter who didn't have a lot of experience. Right? I thought he did very well. He came this close to the KO. Right? My point to you is, rather than go for the KO, he should have gone for the stoppage. <laughs> right? Flash hand speed, if he has it. I know he's a little clunky. But forget for a moment that you're a slugger. Go in there and just flurry. Right? Kovalev himself could have thought, these punches aren't that hard. It's the optics. So Canelo moves his upper body. Canelo's not going to get hit in the head 8 to 17 times around by Kovalev's jab. So what Kovalev is going to have to do against Canelo, he's going to have to do it, is he's going to have to start jabbing to Canelo's body. Right? I expect Canelo to be aggressive like he was in the second Golovkin fight. Right? Kovalev, in my opinion, needs to get on his back foot because it's in those moments when Canelo comes forward that Kovalev on his back foot can get some jabs off. As odd as this sounds, a Kovalev-Canelo fight is going to look amazingly, in my opinion, like Ali Joe Fraser. Right? You have a guy who's an excellent jabber against a guy who's gonna have to try to come in low who wants to collapse the pocket and get to his body. Right? Canelo has picked Kovalev for a reason here. You don't hear him calling out Callum Smith. If he's smart, he's staying far away from Billy Joe Saunders. He doesn't want to fight Golovkin again, at least not right now. Right? My prediction, we never see him at middleweight ever again. Right? Ever again. He wants the light heavyweight crown. He didn't call out Groves Dick. He didn't fight... Adonis Stevenson, even though Stevenson held the title for several years, he hasn't called out Artur Berturbiev. Imagine that fight. Canelo's trying to collapse the pocket, and then he finds out Berturbiev's trying to collapse the pocket. Canelo's trying to go to the ribs, then he finds out Berturbiev wants to trade rib shots. Right, Bivol. Canelo didn't go for Bivol. Too high volume. He's picked the champ who lost to Ward, who lost that first fight to Alvarez, who at times looks like he's been hit by a car in fights. This Anthony Yard, eighth round. Right, Canelo has picked 
Kovalev for a reason. They haven't announced the fight yet. I'm guessing the fight's not going to happen in Kovalev's backyard. I'm guessing that fight is going to be in Vegas or someplace like that where Canelo enters the ring with a two-round advantage. But I want people to be aware of something. Right? In boxing, sentiment changes. You have a lot of people, let me raise my hand here, who feel that Golovkin won that second fight. Hell, let me raise my hand and say I feel Golovkin won the first fight too. Right? Guys get the benefit of the doubt until they don't in boxing. Right? I saw the crowd turn on Oscar De La Hoya. Let me also say, too, that there are many people. Just read your comments in response to the post-fight video who believe that Kovalev was a victim of low blows in that second ward fight. And let's be clear, that fight is up in the air until the round where Kovalev gets stopped was not Tony Weeks' best work as a referee. Right, so something's happened with Kovalev where I'm noticing he's now a crowd favorite. Understand, they had a lot of problems attracting people to that second Ward Kovalev fight. Just Google the box office problems they had attracting a crowd in Vegas. Well, now, Maybe it's the fact that we see Kovalev continuing his career. Maybe it's the tweaks that Buddy McGirt, a trainer who's new to Kovalev's corner, he wasn't there for the Ward fights. Maybe it's the tweaks that we see with Buddy McGirt. Maybe it's Kovalev himself who seemed to be friendly and, you know, came across as an elder statesman in dealing with Anthony Yard, right, in the pre-fight hype. But I'm just telling you, let's not bank on the idea of Canelo being the sentimental favorite for that Kovalev fight, even though what Canelo would be trying to do would be historical. Think about all the titles Canelo has won along the way. When Canelo announced that he was going to fight as a middleweight, I thought, wow, isn't middleweight a bit too big for Canelo? Folks, now he's going for the light heavyweight title. Right? The light heavyweight title. Right? And understand, Canelo, age-wise, isn't that much older than Anthony Joshua. Right? You're talking about a guy who has accomplished a hell of a lot. Understand, too, if Canelo scales this mountain, if he beats Kovalev, right, it's going to look even bigger in history because Kovalev has had more than a dozen championship fights. Right? The fact that Kovalev has fought people like Bernard Hopkins, Jean Pascal, Andre Ward, among others, Right, will make any victory over him on Canelo's resume shine that much brighter, especially when you realize that Canelo just fought Danny Jacobs at 160 and would be jumping 15 pounds to fight Kovalev at 175. Right, so we'll address that fight, the betting angle, once the lines are announced. Uh, ways we can play it when that fight is formally announced. But just be aware of the changing dynamic. Right? As I've said, I was in other videos. I was at a bar. It's no longer with us, unfortunately. The bar got knocked out. Hooters. In uh, West San Jose slash Cupertino. I'm not sure which town it was in. Right? And the crowd was a Canelo crowd. You had a lot of people there rooting for Canelo. In that Golovkin rematch. Understand, the first fight, it looked like Golovkin had the upper hand. 
Now, I know there are those of you who believe Canelo made a comeback in that fight, but understand there weren't a lot of people at the end of that first fight who thought that Canelo had won the first fight. So going into the second fight, given that Golovkin had not lost for years, that first fight was viewed as a draw. Right? Just understand that Canelo was really the crowd favorite. He was the guy who looked like he had come up to middleweight. A lot of people, let me raise my hand again, were surprised Canelo even agreed to the rematch. Right? You thought, wow, I mean, doesn't Canelo have political cover to say, hey, I fought Golovkin, who hadn't lost for years. I got a draw with Golovkin. My work with Golovkin is done. Let me go face the Charlo brothers or, or somebody else. Right? Didn't he have political cover for that? Instead, he took on Golovkin again. Now, at that point, I'm just telling you, Canelo, who is box office gold, I'm aware of the fact that after that second Golovkin fight, he sells out Madison Square Garden and taking out Rocky Fielding. He's box office gold. But at that point, Canelo is really a huge fan favorite. Huge fan favorite. You know, in boxing, it's amazing how the cognoscente, how the boxing hardcore will see a guy get awarded a close fight. And then in a later fight that's close will feel okay well this guy got a gift before or this guy got the benefit of the doubt before I don't have a problem with his opponent being awarded the decision here after 12 tough rounds right I think there are many people in the sport who feel that Canelo never beat Golovkin and has gotten some favorable treatment. Conversely, again, I'm just telling you, in boxing, we love guys. Love them. Who get off the canvas. Who dust themselves off. Who have lost the match, and then who come back heroically. We love comebacks. Right? Now, I'm just telling you, there's no other way to view the first Alvarez fight. None. Other than Kovalev getting crushed. Right? Crusher getting crushed. Right? The ref lets that fight continue. Kovalev starts hitting the canvas. Folks, he looks bad hitting the canvas. He looks finished. His career looks over. Now, the fact that he continues fighting is noteworthy. He beats Alvarez in the rematch. You notice, this is a Kovalev who's willing to dance a little bit, who's willing to move. This is a Kovalev who's willing to showcase a jab that used to just be a precursor to him doling out big-time punishment. Right? Old Kovalev wanted to stop you. New Kovalev is content outboxing you. Let me just say, too, he fights Anthony Yard. He's badly hurt in that eighth round. The ninth round starts. You find out who he is. He's back out there. He's still going for the win. He's still flashing that jab. Still believes in it. By the eleventh round, the fight has completely changed. A guy who was dead on his feet in the eighth round is now courageously taking out a young lion does so by stoppage. Just look at the expression on Yard's face on the canvas. You can tell he's been hit with something fierce. Right? So I know. I know. A lot of fans are going to turn out for Canelo if the fight is in Las Vegas or if the fight is in New York City. Let's be real here. It was standing room only for Canelo Rocky Fielding. Canelo is a box office king. Right? But, public sentiment, where's it going to be? Right? Canelo doesn't owe Golovkin anything. He can say, look, I fought the guy twice. <laughs> Officially, I didn't lose either fight. 
you know, Canelo could easily say, look, there are other guys out there who are deserving. You know, he could even play the, I can't make 160 anymore. And if I'm going to fight at 168, I'm going to give priority to the champs at 168. Right? Why would I fight Golovkin at 168 when he doesn't have a title at 168? Right? I'll agree with that. But understand, there are a lot of people who are sore. Right? This would be like Ali Fraser saying, you know what, we're not going to do this again. No thriller in Manila. Two times is enough. Right? This would be like Bo Hollifield saying, hey, two times are enough. You know? A lot of people are upset that Canelo didn't agree to fight Golovkin again. I imagine the guys at the zone are a little bit upset with that. I'm sure there are a lot of people who said, hey, I heard Golovkin side with the zone. What's preventing Golovkin from fighting Canelo a third time? Then they hear, oh, Canelo wants to fight other people. And you're like, what? He's fighting other people? And the other people aren't as mandatory? Right? I also think there's another crowd out there. The boxing integrity crowd. That says, hey, you know, Canelo got the low-hanging fruit at 168. Is he just going to get the low-hanging fruit, Rocky Fielding, at 168 and not fight Callum Smith? <laughs> no. Not fight some of the other guys? Right? So I'm just telling you, years ago, Oscar De La Hoya was loved. Was loved. Deserved to be loved. That I Corte last round, oh my goodness. Right? De La Hoya was a guy who fought a lot of rough fighters. A lot of rough fighters. Right? Julio Cesar Chavez, for crying out loud. Right? And Oscar was in there trading shots. Then you get to the Felix Trinidad fight. And there was a feeling that Oscar had, you know, was a judge favorite. We'll just put it that way. That there were some close matches that could have gone either way. The Pernell Whitaker fight. Right? Close matches that could have gone either way that went Oscar's way. So, against Felix Trinidad, Oscar De La Hoya puts on a show. Folks, they should have called that high school or college. Right? He's looking dominant against Felix Trinidad. I was rooting for Trinidad in the fight. Right? Trinidad was the new thing. Right? I was rooting for the new. Oscar had had his run. Right? Olympic gold medalist, several big fights. Both guys were unbeaten at the time. There's no question Oscar was ahead in that fight. The last three rounds of that fight, Oscar's on the balls of his feet. Now, we could interpret that however you want. That Oscar's showing lateral movement and making Trinidad miss. Trinidad never really catches Oscar in that fight. Or we could view that, as many did, Oscar running in a fight. <laughs> in a fight that he's winning. Right? Oscar not engaging. Well, I'm just telling you, Oscar didn't get the benefit of the doubt in that fight. With the judges. He doesn't get the benefit of the doubt in the first Shane Mosley fight. Right? An argument can be made. Mosley won that fight. Folks, from this seat, there is absolutely no way that Shane Mosley won the second fight. I know Brian Kenny and Max Kellerman on the telecast were all over the Mosley side of the ledger. Right? I encourage you to watch that fight yourself. Oscar lost the Shane Mosley rematch. Then you realize that Oscar somehow was no longer a judge favorite. In boxing, it can happen that fast. Canelo right now has the world on a string. He's dominant. Not only that, he's that rare fighter who fights Golovkin the first time, fights Golovkin a second time. Gains eight pounds, fights a different champion, a different weight class, comes back to middleweight, fights Danny Jacobs. A fight I thought he was definitely going to lose. Right? He's that rear champion who's fighting big-time opponents in fight after fight. Right? So Canelo deserves the adoration. But just understand the way the world works. There's a group who feels that 
he's credited with beating Golovkin when he didn't. Who feels there's unfinished business with Golovkin? Right? There's a group who is, you know, thinking to themselves, wow, the audacity on this guy. Right? Just like with Ali, it's the audacity on this guy. He thinks he can gain 15 pounds and face a reigning champion in a division in which he's never fought and try to take his title. Right? Watch crowd sentiment. That's going to be very important here. Right? Before the opening bell, who's the guy who the writers want to win the fight? Who the public is rolling with? Right? The Kovalev who fights Andre Ward in the rematch, he wasn't a fan favorite. Right? People didn't care about it. People didn't even care enough to go see that fight. This is after Kovalev drops Ward in the first fight. Right? I'm just telling you this Kovalev in his mid-30s with Buddy McGirt. Something just feels different here. Right now when we're watching a fight and Kovalev is hurt and the other guy tries to close the show we're actually starting to view Kovalev as something other than Goliath. Right? No one roots for Goliath. But yet this current guy looks like you can root for him. Right? Against Canelo. I haven't seen a betting line. I'm just wondering who's going to be the favorite in that fight. How much pub is Canelo going to get? And then when the fight starts, who is most of the public going to root for? Understand, we know Kovalev's not a Boy Scout. That incident on the plane with the woman where Kovalev's throwing money at her is just downright embarrassing. You couldn't even imagine Canelo being in that position. We know he's not a Boy Scout. But there's something compelling about him, isn't there? I'm guessing Kovalev Canelo will be a box office bonanza. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.